All right, hey, this is Hans the Ramen Reader coming at you with another episode of Instant Noodle Recipe Time, the show where I show you what to do with your instant noodles. And today I've got something. Look at that. That's what we have at this point. It was this. And this is Fan's Kitchen Premium Instant Noodles Sesame Chili Sauce Flavor. You can see right there. And right here, this stuff's made in China, and I've never heard of this brand before, which is my absolute favorite. My motto is, my favorite variety is the one I haven't tried yet. So, here's the noodles. Check these out. They end up really good. I, I've had three different varieties of these, and they were, they were really good. And this is the, or I've had two, and this is the third. So I'm going to be sad to see him go, but hopefully, uh, maybe I'll try reaching out to the company and maybe we'll end up with more, more, because I am a fan of Fan's Kitchen. Ding. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Oh. And I'm going to put in the wet sachets at the end. So let's fill it up to the line. Stay back. Dangerous stuff here. This is where the blindness isn't helpful. Probably did. I'll turn that off. Five minutes. Apparently, five minutes is not the right amount of time, but it's a safe bet. And these things have been really good at five minutes, so I'm hopeful I'm doing it right. If not, I apologize. Try four. But they come out really good. Anyways, let's do our quote of the day from the fine, fine novel, uh, Momofuku Ando Speaks. It's not even a novel. It's a book of quotes by the guy who invented the instant noodle. It's not a novel. Uh, number 238. <clears throat> Work done with the sweat of one's brow is immune from the bubble economy. Okay. I set the timer for five minutes, did I? Yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I went to school to be a uh, computer support technician. I grew up really into BBSs. Um, if you're not... If you're too young for that new old, old timey stuff. BBS was basically, you had a modem, and you had like an IBM PC, this is before Windows. I mean, they had them after Windows and stuff, but um, basically like an IBM PC, everything's text, and you would play games on it and send files back and forth and meet people. And it was, it was basically like a text version of the internet, even though there is like Lynx and Gopher, that was like the original, the internet was text. But it was a uh, very small scale. Back when it was like, oh, Jimmy's a real computer whiz. You should get him to come over to your house and, and push the buttons. You know, stuff like that. Back when, back when, I mean, now everybody knows how to like, maybe not install Windows, but they all know how to set up a computer, right? I mean, most people can just set up a computer. And that impresses me a lot. The, I mean, most people know how to search for things on the internet. I remember they had to have walk people through how to look up stuff on the card catalog 
on the text-based thing at the library and it was crazy it's like no, you just like see there's a little blinking cursor and a line and people just stare at it and he's like during my formative years i spent a lot of time down at the library and uh my my folks were on the library board they were the friends of the library did all that kind of stuff but my dad was friends with the uh, head librarian, this guy named Doug, and he was the man. He's still around. He's not dead or nothing. I hope not. I don't think he is. He's a good guy. He'll, he'll outlive us all. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, he kind of took me under his wing, and he had a BBS at the library called Cybercat, and I learned a lot from him, a whole lot. I should look him up and see how he's doing, because... Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten into all the computer stuff that I did get into, but, um, anyways, yeah, but that's where I really started with everything. In fact, way before that, when I was really young, my mom would bring me down to the library. They had an Atari 800 computer down there, and we would play, uh, Hammurabi, which was, uh, Gotta get bushels of grain, gotta do this, gotta do that. And it was like early 80s kind of stuff. Yeah, I miss I miss the the mystique of the computer. Computers now are just like, yeah, I'm going to Walmart, thing ain't working, I'm gonna go have to get a new laptop. Yeah, they're only like 250 bucks. Like 250 bucks for a laptop? God, I remember paying, what was it? I remember when I got a 300 meg hard drive for 300 bucks and it was like, oh my God, they're really a buck a meg now? Can you believe that? Can you believe how cheap technology has gotten a buck a megabyte? Yeah, that's that's what happened. And now it's like, I was showing my daughter and son, you know, they're four and five years old. I was showing them an eight inch floppy disk, you know? Those things I think, single sided, single density ones held like, 180k so you would need two you need eight of those for a meg yeah eight 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 floppies would be one megabyte i think well let's say it was four four of them was a meg and then um So you'd need, for a gigabyte, well, that's a thousand megs, so that'd be 4,000 of those floppies. For a terabyte, that would be time, that'd be like, what, four million? Four million floppy disks for a one terabyte drive. I've got like an eight terabyte drive over there. You can get like an eight terabyte drive on Amazon right now for like just over a hundred bucks. Back then, yeah, when I mean, when RAM, RAM, I remember for a mega RAM, it was like 55 bucks, and it was just like that was like a ceiling that fell. I could talk about computer history for till the cows came home, but yeah, we started watching this show called Halt and Catch Fire, and that's really gotten me all like nostalgic. But those days are over. I don't care what anybody says. There's no... It's like the Silicon, the Silicon Prairie and Silicon Valley. Those places were places of innovation. Now it's just all about, let's make it cheaper. Let's do it this way, let's do it that way. I don't see a lot of new things that come out that are gonna change people's lives, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we got a new computer that, or we got a new device that does this. I think I'm just fine grating my own cheese by myself. You know. I asked for the cheese out of the fridge last night. My wife brought it over and started sprinkling it on my food. I'm like, She's being nice, of course, but it's just like, 
you don't have to sprinkle my cheese, the cheese for me. Wow, this is like a big sloppy mess. Holy cow. Can you even see this? Whoa. Is the camera getting like violently hot? Is it still recording? It's still recording. God, it's so hot though. I gotta hurry. I feel like it's just gonna turn off at any second. I don't know why. I was like, why would you release something to market that's built to explode? That's what it feels like with these things. Uh, there we go. Okay, that'll work. That will work. I guess I should try this stuff first. I'm really like weirded out by it. Here. That's the blue bull. A wonderful blue bull. Haven't tried it yet. Okay. Wow. That broth is like so sloppy. Just as crazy as it gets. Very colorful. That is good. I'm impressed. I wasn't sure how chili sesame paste soup was gonna be. It's good. Generally, chili and sesame, you're talking a dry noodle. <laughs> You're not talking about something that you have as a broth. I wonder how it's going to look in this bowl. Wow. It looks pretty good. That contrast is nice. Okay. So let's... Let me try some of this first. Veggies aren't my thing, but that's all right. I've got some barbecue pork. I haven't gotten out to get more chashu. Somebody asked me the question today. So, you know, I think they're like, so there's a ramen raider eggs, or ramen egg and fried egg recipe. What about a ramen raider chashu recipe? And my friend, whoever you are, I agree. Because chashu at the store is expensive. We don't want 15 bucks a pound for that crap. And if I can, like, with the assistance of my beautiful wife, of course, because I think that's the only way it would actually work out, um, get that done up at home, <laughs> that would be a lot more logical. So, hi, Miles. I'm cooking. You're winning. You are winning. That's right. You're sick of winning. You're just so much winning. Hey now. Well, you keep winning. Here's some spring onion. Here's some. Now this one. I'm gonna go for the blondies. See? I think they look better on something darker like that. Wow, that bowl looks crazy. I'm I'm like, I'm really digging this. Well, we're about out of battery power on the old speaker. So that'll have to get rendered. 
But for now, let's let Rotato do its thing before this camera overheats and explodes. I'm thoroughly impressed that it's still alive. Let's see. What do you think of that? Like that? Really? A little bit further? Okay. Potato, you do your stuff. Do your do your groovy thing.